The title is The Alternative Assets to Trading SPY. The actual topic is looking at a bunch of ETFs. There were some huge moves recently. I'm going back to early August. There were some huge moves in early August. When we had those kind of crazy moves, individual stocks actually held up better than the indexes, which is crazy. And so we always talk about going the other way, like alternative assets, like by going to ETFs and indexes as being the safer play. But the reality was in early August, that was not the case. The equities were actually a little safer. I know that mm -hmm. seems crazy, mm -hmm. but on a percentage basis, volatility in the equities went up less than volatility in the indexes and some of the alternative assets. But now that things have normalized a bit, we decided to do a segment on something that's a little bit of an alternative to the SPY because the SPY has relatively low volatility again compared to some of the ETFs. Let's take a look, sector ETFs. So like the SPY and other indices, sector ETFs can eliminate single stock risks by creating a basket of underlying assets. Trading an ETF is a great way to add an extra level of diversification to your portfolio. So we decided to look here at two, four, six, eight, ten 10 different ETFs. I currently have positions on an XLU, XLK, XLU, XL. Uh, you have positions in XBI, XHB, and XLU. Oh, okay. I know there's some Just letting you know. You go. But we do trade pretty much all of these over time, almost all of these. I and mean, we've traded all these. Let's put it this way. We have traded all these from time to time. It just depends whichever one is liquid, whichever one's kind of hot. There's probably even more than these than this 10. So in the past 12 months, all the sectors have seen positive returns. I mean, that's pretty rare that everything's been positive. The banking sector and the high tech sector have outperformed the SPY for most of this period, delivering returns of more than 20%. So you can see on the right-hand side, we wrote SPY, and then there's two or three that are at or above the SPY, two of at above the SPY. Not suggesting that you should have had any idea of knowing which ones those would have been, just pointing out you know, how much they all have, are, have so, are somewhat correlated to the SPY. However, from a long-term perspective, XLE has consistently underperformed, while XLK, XLV, XLI have typically delivered strong performances. The SPY has outperformed most ETFs in the years following the pandemic and from late 2023 to present. The SPY has been pretty strong, just putting all this stuff in context. Over the past decade, most of these ETFs have had higher implied volatility than SPY, providing extra opportunities for premium sellers. For example, XLE, which has the highest average implied volatility, has underperformed and traded within a range for years. This makes it a really good candidate for neutral strategies. Anyway, we're just showing it based on impl by implied volatility, the SPY is on the very bottom. You know, and, the mo and, the most, and the most liquid. So next, let's take a look at the correlations with the S&P 500 and how strong are they in different market conditions. We separated the timeframes into bull and bear markets based on volatility. Past 10 years, bull market from 2020 to 2020, except for 2020, 2022, we had a little bit bear market during that period. I guess that's how we'll qualify that. So what you can see here is in a bull market with low volatility, the correlations tend to be lower. You're always going to have lower correlations in a bull market. If you look at the red areas there, that's where the correlations are relatively low. Bull markets, you get low correlations because in bull markets, everything kind of goes their own way. In contrast, when volatility increases, all that red in the second column disappeared. So when volatility increases, the correlation between assets becomes stronger, indicating that assets are moving in the same direction more often, meaning that when we go down, everything goes down those red squares become yellow. So the correlations are much lower in down moves, which we all knew, but this is just something to point out. It gives you more diversification in these kind of markets. I'm sorry, the correlations are much higher in, in down markets yeah, and that, much lower that, in, up in, in up markets and down markets. Everything seems to move the same, right? It's hard to get uncorrelated it's, in, a, in, a, in any type of it's movement, easier, sustained movement. It's easier in up markets, but yes, none of this is mm -hmm. super easy. These are just alternatives. Let's go to the next slide. So the energy sector, XLE, and the utility sector, XLU, have shown much lower correlation against others, especially XLE, in both bull and bear markets. This suggests that XLE and XLU could provide better diversification for our main portfolio or major indices, especially if you have a lot of positions on SPY and stuff like that. I, like I mentioned earlier, I've been trading, trying to trade XLU and XLE all year. They're tough. They are. They're most tough. Definitely. Let's and I wish they one. weren't. Like I wish they were, they were better trading vehicles, but they are tough. These are some of the takeaways. ETFs offer exposure to the entire industry, mitigating the risk associated with individual stocks. They're really good tools for diversifying our portfolios. Many sector ETFs exhibit higher implied volatility compared to the SPY, creating attractive trading opportunities for premium sellers. And in bear markets, assets often move in the same direction with an increase 
and implied volatility. Again, nothing you didn't know before, but just an interesting look at how in bull markets, things kind of go their own way. And you can be diversified mm -hmm. a little bit easier. In bear markets, it's much harder to get diversified.